Okay. Hello everyone, I am Kathleen Buchanan. My husband is, this is Buddy Buchanan. Or Vanna White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk, so I'm the talker. Um, I'm, we are not by any, any stretch of the imagination are we experts at beekeeping. And I don't know that you can ever be an expert because bees are bees and they don't behave like they're supposed to all the time. And the weather interferes with your beekeeping. So there's a lot of variables. But we will, we will tell you what we've learned so far. We have been beekeepers for, this is our fourth season. Um, we were up to six, six hives until the snow Mageddon hit. And that killed every bee. So we lost six hives. So we had to start over again two years ago. And we're up to four now. And we hope in the spring we'll be able to split the hive, it's called. We can actually take some, some frames out, put them in an empty box, and, and make two out of one. So, let's get started. Why are, we, why are we beekeepers? Three reasons, mainly. Of course, honey. Everybody likes honey. Uh, and you can get a, between 10 and 200 pounds of honey a year if you have a good season. Um, we drew off honey for the very first time last year year and we got, we got seven gallons about 84 pounds about 84 pounds yeah. that's what we got and that was pulling off from uh, four supers four supers and i'll have to tell you what a super is in a minute um ag exempt you have to have six hives per 10 acres before you can go in and uh, register to get your ag exempt and we, we are ag exempt now even though we lost six hives we're building them back up and of course pollination um that's a big factor uh, of course, you know, little backyard beekeepers like us don't make a tremendous impact on that. But still, it is it is a nice uh, byproduct, and it's fun. Uh, they're fascinating creatures. They really are. Their their society is like the perfect society, and they're fun to watch. Okay, bee facts. Everybody knows there's a queen bee, and every uh, only one, and every hive. Uh, she is larger than the other bees, and she stays in a brood box. This bottom box, the bigger box, is called a brood box. That's where she lays her eggs. 15 to 2,000, 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. Oh, Lord. Wow. A lot. Okay. A lot. And she usually lives two to five years. Um, we haven't gotten to the point yet where our, our queens are not uh, performing well. Um, we, uh, because we've had to replace high, our, all our hives. So our, our bees, our queens are only two years old or less. Um, and then you've got your drones. Those are the males. And all they do is mate with the queen during the spring, springtime, March, uh, March, April. Um, once they mate, they die. The ones that don't die go back into the hive and they do nothing. They sit there, they get fat, they eat the honey. They do not do a thing. <laughs> Beehives, beehives are ruled by women. Ruled by women. When it comes to be, when it's about what, November, December. Uh, even starting now. Start even starting now. With the worker bees, which are the girls, they'll start pushing the drones out. They'll sting them or push them out now because you don't want any drones. They don't want any drones in their colonies over the winter because they're eating their honey, and they need that honey. To, but how many drones are in there at a time? Uh, well, and that's, that's one of the fascinating things about beehives is that queen knows exactly how many drone eggs, you know, how many to fertilize and how many not to. If she fertilizes the egg, right, then it's a male. If she doesn't fertilize it, it's a female. And she, she can keep count of that even though they're hatching every day. I, it, yeah, I know. It's a kind of thing. I mean, there's thousands. There's a typical hive is around 30,000 bees. And out of that, there's maybe 5,000 5, drones. drones maybe. So it's, it's mostly uh, mostly women. And then during the winter, of course, it's all, it's all females. Uh, five to eight weeks is, is all that they live during the summer because they use so much energy flying to get honey back and forth that, in, in, the, in this heat that that's as, as long as they can survive. Uh, and of course, your 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 worker bees, when they're born and they start to fly, they all have a specific job, and they know their job. I don't know how they know their job, 
but they do. Some stay just right there at the queen, and because she can't do anything but lay those eggs and go to the next cell, lay that egg, go to the next cell. So she has a little group of bees that do nothing but clean her and feed her. That's all they do. <laughs> and then you have a group that a group that protects your hive. This hive right here. This is the opening down here. You see this opening. You'll have guard bees to keep anything out that's not doesn't belong to their hive they will attack and fight. And now our biggest problem with that is the wild bees. The feral bees that are in, you know, logs and trees and they'll come in. They're very they uh, try to they're called robber bees. They will try to rob the honey. They will kill these bees and then take the honey. And it can happen overnight. Oh yeah. In a day. Because yeah. we've gone and looked at a hive and it's been perfectly fine. Bees are going in and out. The next day we go and there's uh, all the bees thousands of bees on the Ground. Are they and usually I'm bigger? Part of the wild bees? Are no, but they're hardy. They're strong. And, and they got uh, mean they're state. mean. And uh, they, uh, they and, and our bees are our bees are gentle. Some do they look <laughs> they're sweet bees. They we have bees. some sweet they bees. Seem and right. we have some <laughs> some very aggressive bees. But we do bees, have a hive that's aggressive. And that hive that's so aggressive, it actually makes the most honey. So I guess they're harder workers too. But anyway. I'm pretty careful with that hive. Oh yeah. It's yeah. one day pretty good. Yeah. Of course they do regulate the temperature also by flapping their wings. They keep the temperature around 90 degrees all the time, summer and winter. They're working hard now. They're working hard now. And in the afternoon, you'll see a lot of them will come up out of their hive and they'll just cover this box right here. To cool off. Yeah. 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 Then once the sun goes down, they'll go back. Some produce wax, of course, to make your honeycomb, to build your honeycomb. Some just store the food. Anyway, they all have a specific job, and they all know their job from the time that they're they're hatched, which I think is just so cool. very interesting. Anatomy, okay, of our hive. We have a top cover. There you go, Van. <laughs> and then there's an inner board. <laughs> there is an inner board that has a hole just for ventilation. Okay. Then you have, a, this is called a super. That is where they store their honey. And you can pull a frame up or two. Let's see. That's wax. That's honeycomb. This is more valuable than the honey. Because if they have to build the comb, it takes longer to get. See, it starts starts out looking like this. You know, you have a foundation. You have one that's for, this, for clean. You can buy you can buy them like this. They've already got the outline, the, the blueprint for for their for their combs. So they just build off of this until it looks. This is comb here. So is that the bees' wax? Whatever yes. it's comb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't like, y'all don't want to get rid of that because they need to know. Because we've asked people, can we have some beeswax for working on wood? And they're like, we don't have to. Yeah. Um, now, some see, people, maybe your larger uh, apiaries will mm -hmm. do that. Or whatever. Yeah, they'll do that. Maybe we don't. Yeah. Um, we'll see. If we lose the hive, we make it a point to save all the wax, all these frames. Yeah, see, I'll, all I'll these. put them in a freezer. Put them in a freezer. Because no. there's stuff in here. It's a lie that will destroy a hive. We've got corona yeah. we've, learned the, we've learned the hard way that way, too. Yeah. I'll go into that, too. So these we'll use again. We'll just put these into another hive, and the bees will clean it all up. They'll clean it all up and keep building. So you don't have to ever you know, clean your, clean all the junk off of it or anything. You know, just put it right in there. What do they actually do when they clean it all up? They ingest it. <laughs> You get to start it over. You start it over. Okay. Recycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Conservation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like you guys have a hive. To know when to put another super on top of that, you look. You look in here and see how much cone has been made. Uh, you know, out from from the from the frame. It's got to be eighty to eighty-five to ninety percent. Then you put another super on. If it's all just clear in there and you don't see any cone being that's been built, don't put another super on. You wait. Well, that's a super. 
Um, if they run out of room in your super and you don't put one on soon enough, they will take their little queen and about a hmm, third of them, half of them, they'll go swamp behind them. They'll go they'll they'll leave. To go find another place. So you have to be real careful uh, in, in your supers. Below the super is what we call a brood box. That's where the queen's going to lay all the eggs. Uh, you can do an 8 frame super or you can do a 10 frame. We do 10s. And when we feed, we put a feeder in and take one of our frames out. But that's uh, that's where the that's eggs. That's where they lay the eggs. That's where the eggs would be laid. See, I'll buy. I'll get some bees in the spring, and I will drop them into this this brood box here. And I'll come in there and clean all this up. Yeah. My sort of land. Yeah. Cool. Do you have to water them at this time? They will go. Uh, they will go two miles to water. We have, a we have a we have a tank pot that they go to plus we have a fountain running but they do need water they do need water yes. so you need to, they need to be fairly close to some kind of water source and they are natural yeah. creek right like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Academy, about how long does it take for them to get the 85 to 90 percent that's going to a season the pollen and the nectar flow that's going yeah. on. So it could happen there's in a, a season. Yeah, or there's a, a really good pollen flow. We had a, we had a good a nice cool a good spring. spring. It was uh, wet. Yeah, we did fairly cool. Mm -hmm. and so we would a lot expect of a, lot. a lot of pollen. Yeah, that's why we we've got four supers on on, on some of them. You have them because mm -hmm. of the honey flow being so. And they've really slowed down now. And now that, yeah, down. now that they're slowed down, um, we're feeding them manually, which I have a, a slide on that uh, as well. And where it says with or without foundation, you can actually hang um, a, frame. a frame bare with no foundation on it. And they build their own. It looks, it just, it, it's just like in a bee. It'll just be the bees hanging on their cone on, on one of those frames. Um, we don't do that. Takes too long. Uh, it takes too long to get a nice, uh, a nice honeycomb and uh, it's it's hard to maneuver. You know, don't want to you don't want to break it or can, can we I don't mess a, with that. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. You said you're up to four super boxes. So why would you not like as you're adding them, like take one away and take this stuff out? How long do you keep stacking them? And oh, we'll, we'll them? stack them until we harvest. Okay, so because we don't we don't want to have to harvest it's it's some trouble. I mean, it's it's some labor. You're generally, you're, you're generally going to harvest your honey in July, late July into August. Oh, okay. So you want as many supers as you can up until that point. More supers. And then you have to leave the one for them to eat over the winter. Right. And you got to remember, each super, a super full of honey. Is going to weigh around 70 pounds. Wow. Wow. This right here. So you start stacking. You know, you get some weight. Yeah, it's quite a <laughs> Then there's a bottom board. There's a bottom board, which is what the the brood box sits on, and that's where they come in and out and in and out. Um, if we're worried about robber bees, like we caught robber bees in the act one time, which is unusual. Um, our mentor told us to put a reducer on the outside. There's a reducer right over there. That's a reducer. And all it does is, is block, the size of block the a portion of your entrance. So there's less area to guard. So yeah. our bees have a better chance of warding off those wild bees. Oh, and it worked. We, we did the reducer and we saved that high. And that's the piece going in. Now, too. That high became, yes, yes, yes. A little more aggressive. We do think some of the wild bees kind of infiltrated. It became that high became more aggressive. Yeah. How do you know how they look? What does the wild bee look like compared to the other bees? It doesn't. You can't tell the difference. But they're fighting. They're they're fighting outside the hive. And you'll see and them steaming, hive, You'll see them hive, steaming each other. Yeah, your hive bees, bees don't <coughs> fight. There's no fighting. No, no. They only fight. Um, a bee that's not supposed to be in there. Okay, so we have supers lined up next to each other. How do you think our bees know which super to go into? They're all just like that. <laughs> I just know. Footprint. Every queen has a different pheromone, a different ah, scent. Yeah. And once they know their queen, 
they will not go anywhere but to that hive that has that queen. You can put them right next to each other and they'll still go to the hive they're supposed to, which is pretty, pretty cool too. Um, we do have also queen ex ex excluders because you do not want your queen to move up into your supers and start laying eggs. <laughs> Uh, we haven't yet had that, we haven't had that problem yet. Ours have all stayed down in the fruit box, but it happens, so, uh, so they do have something to, uh, to help with that. Do you just put one of those in as a matter of course? I've never we, used one. My mentor, Tommy Snow, has. Yeah. And I'm not really sure, Don, as why he felt the need to do it. To do that. Yeah, but we haven't. There's three things that are very, uh, a death to a hive. Um, <coughs> hive beetles are tiny little black bugs, like little water bugs is what they look like. I don't know if you can see them there or not. But uh, they'll eat that cone, the pollen, the stored honey, the larva, they'll eat the, the eggs. Um, they even, I think, lay their eggs. No, that's the bought moss, wax moss. Lay they come out of the eggs. ground. They're in the ground naturally. The, the so hive beetles. around my hive, I will spray termites. Uh, poison around my eye, and that will stop. That will help stop that. This year, I guess because it's so dry, mm -hmm. I, have, I have not even seen one eye. Normally, in this trap, you put in it to catch, you put a liquid in there that attracts the eye bigger, and they'll go to that. Kill some seed, like an ant boiling. Yeah. The wax moths, they make tunnels. They chew through the cone and they destroy beeswax. And we have, I think we have one there that's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they destroy us. <coughs> and here they are. And they're real they're so waxy, see, white, waxy looking. See this stuff here? This is a web that this wax moth and it'll, they won't even eat the wood. Wow. Wow. I just, we were gone and lost the hive and didn't realize it. And when I went in there and opened it up, it's full. They're, uh, they're uh, like, like a magnet. Yeah. How did you get rid of them? Pardon? How did you get rid of them? I physically had them. That hive, I lost, put everything in the freezer. That's why you put things in the freezer. It kills. It kills. Because they, they, they could eat it. Uh, I smash them with my finger. <laughs> when I go in, I got a hive now that's weak. And I went in, and I did see it, two or three wax moths. They're like a little slug looking thing. You just kill them. Okay. And you're going to know it. If they start to build a web too, then you got to clean that web up. I had a frame that had some web in it. And uh, they're very, it happens yeah. quickly. And they've lost two hives. Mm -hmm. Just wax moths. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the varroa mites, they're parasitic. They're tiny. And they'll get on the bee. That's a bee larva there, which is real small. Oh, and they'll infect that bee, bee then oh. with the disease. Wow. They will. Uh, they're the hardest ones to control. Because you can't see them. And there's, a, there's a strip that after you harvest your honey, it's got to cool down now, that you put in the brood box here, two strips that we use to help control the varroa mites. What is it? What's on the strip? Uh, just oh, poison. Just a, doesn't bother the bees, but you can't mess with the honey. Any honey, you can't do it bef before you harvest. You have to wait until after you harvest. Wait until after you harvest, yeah. You can't it'll infect your, your honey, so you can't. But anyway, they're, they're nasty. Okay, all of our tools, our suit. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to volunteer and put it on, you can. <laughs> <laughs> but this is our suit, what a suit looks like. I'm sure I you can <laughs> see pictures of them, and um, they do get pretty dirty. They're almost, almost all of them are white, always, because of the heat. <laughs> you really get hot. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that's why you don't wash it. A beekeeper never washes his suit. You don't want any kind of a detergent uh, smell on it. All the stuff that's on here is either blood or, uh, or honey, you know, honey or something from the hive. And so they're comfortable with that. You move very, very slowly when you're working with your hive and, and no noise. Uh, some people hum a little bit. These are the gloves. Yeah, they'll, they'll, go, they'll, go they'll go all, you know, all the way up to here. here. Um, and then your hat, your veil. Uh, there's people like our mentor. He just wears his veil. He doesn't wear anything on here. He just has jeans on, 
And I put this long <coughs> little cap in there. Because, Hold it out. Yeah, to keep yeah, it out. This right here is pretty floppy. Yeah, it, it, And I'll show you one. I, I did learn A bee came at him straight on. Oh, and so stung his foot. That's right. Oh, uh, they do. Ow. 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 It looked like it was up. It was all his head stuff. Wow. So, so caught you right there. 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 And then there's a smoker. This is our smoker here. We smoke the entrance when open the top. Now, in order to get into a hive, there's a little bit of a hole that you have to go saw the smoker and then the metal, uh, the little metal uh, hive tool. Uh, and when you take off the top, when you take the top off and you're going, you're, and you work with your bees and then you're ready to put your top back on, you try not to kill, kill as little amount of bees as you can. You can't help because they're everywhere. They'll go all around and around. And so this is a nice soft brush that, you know, you can kind of brush them off. I've talked to them and tell them. No, I don't want to squish you. <laughs> but then you get squashed. You, right? you, you, you do. You lose some. You lose some. Yeah. Okay. Then when you're ready to um, harvest, we have an uncapping knife, which is over there And you take a frame full of honey. You can get them electric that heat up. So you, just, you just get it, you kind of just scrape it down. Because that, you'll have about <coughs> three inches of Well, you can see how far it sticks out. out. So you um, cut the part so that you, you cut can that see. Off, and it, then you set it in uh, an extractor, and an extractor holds eight frames. You stick it in the extractor, you extract it out. But yeah. this stuff here, you save this, whatever's you uncap with, we have an uncapping tank, it's called, that falls in there. Because there's honey mixed in with that, too. And then we have a, um, we feed them during, like right now we're feeding uh, the, two the two hives that are kind of weak. Uh, we're feeding them, and there's two types. The one type we have is, is on the brood box. It's <coughs> the feeder that's in the feeder where you pour syrup into the is box. in the brood box. Well, no, you don't know how that comes when we buy the bees. That's the feeder. Okay. That's a feeder. You, you, we make up our own sugar syrup for them and, and fill that up and put it in there. Or there's this other one right there. We tried. We don't like it as much, but um, you can fill that one up. They also have some some that you can hook to your your board in the front that like a like a mason jar upside down. Um, and with a little tray that it comes out, of, like, out into, and you can do an yes. external or a chicken feeder. But we, we like the internal the best. So you have to take the super off in order to put the, the feed in there. Mm -hmm. I just slide, the last. What so I just slide just, it. I just slide it over. Okay. Just enough. So you have to <coughs> unattach it. Yeah, you got to pry it loose. You got to pry it loose. The bottom of these frames will have stuff on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got to actually really get in there and. Plus, when it gets honey in it, which my my, my two hives, that our hives that are big hives that we've had for two years, I don't feed them at all. They uh, they live off whatever honey's in there, and I don't believe I could try to pry. If I got four supers, 
I couldn't pry that off. They weighed a couple hundred pounds trying to pick that one. Wow. So there, I just check the top. I don't go into I don't go deep into those hives. I, just, you know, I check the top, see how many bees are there. And when I decided they were getting crowded, I had another super. But you don't want to swarm. Nope. Why are you harvest in July when it's super hot? <laughs> well, that's usually when the end end of the pollen season, end of the the heavy okay. flow. Okay. So they're not, you know, they're in, yeah, that's just the numbers are down. The numbers much, are down on the bees right now. We want as much honey as we can get, and and after July it, it drops. Okay, off. they're not going to produce a whole lot more. Honey. Okay. Now, if it rains here, the queen right now the queen's not laying at all. The queen's not laying any eggs. But once we get a rain, that queen may start to lay again once it gets some moisture in there and it begins to cool down. Yeah. So she's Kathleen, you didn't have rest. any die from this last freeze for the, this year's freeze or did it not? I didn't lose anything that? this year. <laughs> Say what? I didn't no. lose it. We didn't lose anything uh, last year. Did you protect them in any way or just okay. let them out? So just no. let them out. All, all I did was put the reducer in and uh, to reduce the opening. Yeah. So, uh, so if they're they're all the they got blankets you can put around them. Yeah, you know, they have special insulating yeah. uh, but you didn't And it. what they do in the cold weather, they will ball up into little balls. Yeah. So and that's the how they stay warm. And when we lost, when the minus two, when we lost everything, that's how you found them when I opened up. Oh, little balls of bees all froze. They were oh, dead. They're they're terrible. Terrible. That's terrible. I mean, that's terrible. But they're also, they're trying to protect the queen. Right. She's in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have a problem with overspray from people spraying their fields with chemicals? And then it, we did have that one time we lost the hive. We do not know why. And uh, Tommy told us it could have been somebody sprayed somewhere. And drifted yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, it, it can happen. I mean. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't. I, I didn't put it in the slide, but um, one of the cool things. Uh, about bees when they're out collecting their honey. Um, you have a group that are scouts. You know, not all the bees leave the hive to go find honey. You just have a group of scouts. They go out and they find honey. When they come back, they found pollen. I mean pollen. <laughs> they find pollen. They find honey. Okay. They come back and they'll they'll stand on that little board that sticks out, that small board, and they'll do a dance. And it's the coolest thing to see. That there's three types of dances. The dance tells other bees that are in the wings waiting to go out. It tells them how far the honey is and in what direction the honey is. No. It's wild. The pollinator. The pop. Well, there's a flat. My mind the pollinator. So anyway, like um, one of the one of the dances they do is in a circle. They'll 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 land on the board and they'll go round and around and around in a circle several times. And that is telling those bees that less than 100 feet away, there's some pollen. And it depends on where the bee starts his dance, where, he, where, he, where he's aimed at, where he's pointed at. That's where the honey is. Okay. And then he does his little dance, and it's 150 feet away. Oh my. So then a group will go, boom, right there. Then you'll, you might have a scout come back that'll do a, it's called a sickle dance. And that's a, like a moon. So again, he'll point in the direction, she will point in the direction, and she'll do this little sickle. And, and that tells her that it's between, between 150 and 500 feet away. Wow. And, she, and a group will go there. And then the last one they do is my favorite. It's a waggle. <laughs> and it's a figure eight, but they shake their hineys, and they go in a, in, a, in a figure eight like that. It's so cool. And that tells them that that, that pollen is Oh, more than 500 wow. feet away. So what they do is the ones, the pollen that's far away, farthest away, they're going to send their youngest bees that have hatched, that are the stronger bees that can fly, the be, you know, the best. <coughs> the short distance will be the bees that are almost at the end of their eight weeks of life, so that they can get that. And, and that, and that I think Vanna White should demonstrate these three dances for us. <laughs> Bees, the weather, the death of a queen, or of course there's a swarm. That's 
what a swarm looks like. They are, they got out of their hive and they just found a place to hook on to while a group of their bees goes out and finds a new home. And then that whole hive will move as one, or that whole group will move as one into a new place. And the queen's within that? Yes. Yep. She's in there. Mm -hmm. um, we save the frame, like he told me, he's already gone over that. We do save the, the frames even if they're diseased. And we were given this hint by our mentor. You know those awful smelly things that you yes. put on to your yes. Yes. commodes, you know? Are they different color? Uh, yeah. They smell really bad. Uh, you put one of those on top and then he wraps it in plastic and just leaves it, duct yeah. tape, seals it, and leaves it for, for the season. If I run out of freezer room, that's what he does. Then, then I'll wrap the engine <coughs> uh, to get that, that crystal, I can't yeah. remember yeah. when you crush it up, I put a piece of paper, uh, cardboard on top and I put that on top, that is crushing and it up. Kills. And I wrap the whole thing in plastic and tape it and seal it up. And it kills anything in there, anything. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even the bigger two, you never know. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it works. Then you can buy bee packages, or you can get a nuke. A nuke is a, a miniature size. It's only five frames. It's going to be five frames with a queen. With a queen. You know, have drawn comb, comb. So people that have like lost a hive, but you know, so they still have the boxes, they just want some replacement frames, you can do a new. B packages, let me show you this. This is my favorite thing. I don't need that glove. <laughs> okay, this is how, when you order bees, this is how they come. They come in this, in this, now, this wire. Now package bees, okay, only, only loose bees. About three pounds of bees. Which right, three is, pounds. I don't know how many bees. Okay, so it comes like this. It takes two days. We order our bees from Georgia. Because they're nice and sweet. <laughs> and they're pretty. Yeah, so they're nice. Their, their color, they have more of the orange uh, on them. Their bodies are just a really pretty, pretty color. And they're, they're docile, more so than the, the Texas bees. But they come like this. They, they get mailed to your post office. And believe me, your post office will we'll call you. <laughs> three, pounds, three pounds of bees that you, the, their customers can hear the buzz. From the from their back, <laughs> and it scares them. You know. So you go down and you get your bees. So this can in the middle. Uh oh, you might have to get your knife to get my shit come out. No, I gotta get the little box out inside. Help me. <laughs> the, but the can, because it takes two days for these bees to get to me. They put a can of, of syrup uh, for the bees. Okay. And, and there's tiny little holes all around that can where the syrup just barely, um, it barely oozes. So the bees will just eat on that during those two days. Okay, that's all I need. Thank you. I don't even see the box in oh, there. It is. <laughs> all right, so, so this will be, be uh, full of syrup. And when you get it, wow. There's also inside is your queen. She's in her own little box. Can you guess why she's in her own little box? She's throwing away. These what? She's in the box because the bees don't necessarily know her. They have to get used to her scent. That's right. They don't know her scent. If you just put her right in here, they would kill her. So there, there's an oak. There's a hole on both sides of the queen's chambers. It's, it's a plug of wax that's soaked in honey and or sugar water. And that's what she lives on while she's in this little cage. It takes two days for her to get here, okay? So they've had two days of her pheromone. But when you get over to the hive, that's not enough time. She needs at least four days. So what you do is you go to your hive, you take your can out, you open it up, and you just do this. You just don't into the brew box. And if they don't all come out, it's okay. You can just set the box on the ground and within an hour they'll all be inside their, their, uh, their new hive. Now the queen, however, because they don't know her yet, we're going to put this little cage in between two of these frames like that and just leave it there for two more days. After two days, I'll come in and I'll check if she's still in here. Oh, by the way, she's in here with uh, three drones. 
And of course, they're all dead by the time they get here. <laughs> the queen has a straight stinger. She can sting over and over and over and over. The worker bees have a, sting, have, a, have a stinger with a bar on it. They can sting one time and they're dead. And if they sting, they pull their stinger out and their guts come out with it. She can do this over and over. So if she's still in here, then I poke a hole in one side and I just you know, try to get her down in, into there. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it's easy. So once she's in there, then you just put your super on top and your top board on top, and uh, she'll start laying right away. Hmm. And Neat, huh? So when, when she lays her eggs and stuff, could there be a queen bee in there? No, they will. At the proper time, <laughs> they will begin, the queen will begin to lay queen cells, they call them. When she starts getting old. When she starts getting old. Oh, and they'll, they will raise up at least one. If they have two queens, then the queens will fight it out. So and the stronger one will win. Wow. And their cells are like an oblong shape. They're bigger. If you go in and look at your brood, at your brood box, instead of there being the, the uniformed cones, there'll be one that's bigger and kind of a oval shape. And the, the, that tells you that's a queen cell. And you have a queen. And when she lays that egg, the worker bees then know by the shape that they're only to feed that cell the nectar, which is called royal jelly. Oh, royal That's jelly. all she gets is the royal jelly, and she'll be a queen. She'll turn into a queen. Wow. That's fascinating. Oh, isn't that interesting? Gosh. Okay, we showed you the internal feeders, the top feeder, the entrance feeder we talked about. Oh, the pollen patties. I have the pollen patty over there. They also make artificial pollen. I mean, it's real pollen, but companies produce it, so you can you can actually uh, you just cut it whatever size you want, however much you want to put yeah, on it. I just put like a three-inch strip on top of the root box. On the root box, you just put it on there. And and they'll eat it. They'll eat off of that. How uh, much does that box of bees cost when you hold it? This, this box right here, mm -hmm. shipping and everything. I just ordered. The other day, because the prices are going up uh, for next April, uh, shipping and everything was one fifty. That was uh, Mountain Sweet Honey out of Georgia. But that's not with the bees. Yeah. One hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Yeah. That box. Right oh, the box. Uh, I think I thought you meant the high. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I was talking about when you buy. Oh, just yeah. by themselves. Yeah, about hundred and fifty dollars. Now next year I will. So I will buy a new and put it in this box and use that and put my those bees into a different box. Because I want uh, well Tommy told me a place he got some pretty good luck with, uh, in Jacksonville. He didn't give me the name, but he bought four nooks there and he did great, so I'm gonna try that. But a nook's they're running two to two fifty. Yeah. A brand new hive. I mean, if you had a brand new brood box with bees, 10 frames, feeder, reducer, everything, right now, 375. So. We're not making any money. I'll <laughs> 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 yeah, put a lot more into it. A lot more with that tax exemption. Now we know why it's so high. Any of your bees, Texas bees, bees. Yes. any of them come to the box from the field? We have Texas bees from a uh, local. We have Texas bees from Dayton. From Dayton. From, from Dayton. But you Florida. bought Texas. all of your bees? You bought yes. them and put them in? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, because we, we put a box fish. out and put some fragrance in there and yeah. they came to the box. You, 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 to you uh, attract the swarm. And they... Yes, sir. Yes. Only one. We have four boxes, and they came to one, and it's thriving. Still learning Good. how to Good. handle it, but Absolutely. they liked it, and they set up shop, and they nice. started to make money. So you nice. can do that. A friend of ours did too. She had them for two days, and they left. Yeah, they yeah. might leave. See, so. But we couldn't buy bees at that time or whatever. My husband's like, let's just try to see if they'll come hey. to the box. There's yeah. people that uh, they go and get the swarm, you know, and bees, you know where they like the best to make a hive? In water meter boxes. <laughs> they love yeah. the water meter boxes. Yeah, they do. And there's a guy that at the club, that he go, that's what he does. He goes and gets them. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Where do you guys meet? In, in uh, Fairfield at Sam's restaurant? What day? The 4th or Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. At 530. Um, this is what extractors look like. Uh, inside, it's like a big centrifuge. Uh -huh. And you take your frames and you drop them into these slots and turn it on and it whips the honey out of the frame against the wall. And so it drops down from the bottom, the honey does. And then there's a spigot there. And you can just put your jar under there, open your spigot, and you've got your honey. And there's well, also a... Actually, well, there's a, you need to, we use a pantyhose. We fill, put a filter on the, on the spigot. But otherwise, you know, honey is the only food in the world <laughs> that doesn't go bad. Yeah. Uh, they've found it in pyramids, yeah. and they've tested it, and it's just like the honey that you're, you're getting out today. It's so full of antioxidants, antimicrobial, anti antibacterial products that nothing can grow in it. It may crystallize, and you may think, oh, it's bad. It's all, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a no, no, no. Put it in the microwave, warm it up. And that's right. It's perfect. It's perfect. Honey is perfect. So that's, uh, but anyway, that's how you, uh, that's how you do your extract your honey. Is it heated at all, or is it just what? When you what is that extract? Is there any heat to it? Does it put any heat to the is it electric? Mine's electric. No, not really. That is the end of our presentation, but I would like to, to let you taste some of our honey. Yes.